Hi, this is Chris from Chris Conkle Vlogs. If you want to learn commercial drywall in less than an hour, then stay tuned. Chris Conkle Vlogs for commercial construction designers and building professionals. All right, next time you're on site and you want to look like a pro, a drywall pro, uh, I want to show you how to rip tabs properly. First, you just loosen off the beginning one. Like the, I'm sorry, the start of each one, a few inches. And then you're gonna grab a, a handful of them and rip. Keep them in your hand and rip. 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 You have all the tubs in your one hand, you look like a rock star. You're a pro, you've done it before. See? Then just simply tie that into a knot and put it in the recycling. That's a drywall tip. Alright, so the first thing you have to do when drywalling is um, figure out your layout. So make sure that you have a full sheet. Uh, you start inside the wall somewhere with a full sheet and you cut into your ends. So make sure you can get the, that last sheet in. Um, so yeah, make sure you check your, your layout. All right, so a couple things first. I want to explain to you guys um, the stud. So the stud is like, think of it as an arrow almost. You can see it's got the flange. Okay, the, uh, this is pointing forward. So when you're framing, you make sure all your studs are pointing the same way. And so when you come to drywall, you uh, start um, on the end where the soft is leading towards the heart. So this is called the soft side. This is called the hard side. Okay, soft side, hard side. You screw in the soft side, always always screw in the soft side first. Uh, this is really important. And the reason being is because you screw in the soft side and then the hard side and it snaps squarely into place. If you screw in the hard side first and then the soft side, you're gonna have crooked studs and that'll bulge out your joint. So, so le learning how to tape cut is, uh, or learning how to draw your centers, there's two ways to do it. Uh, the, the one way which I recommend for rookies is to measure from the bottom up and make the mark. Uh, we're doing two foot centers, so uh, we're gonna mark it two feet. My, the way that I do it is it's simple. I pinch it between my, uh, between my pointing, my pointer finger here and my thumb. I put it, I put, pinch the tape and the, and the pencil together like so. Okay, I'm marking two foot centers, so I'm gonna find 23 and three quarter. That's where I wanna be at the edge of the drywall. I wanna allow a quarter inch for the pencil. If you're marking 16 inch centers, you wanna go to 15 and three quarter, and then 31 and three quarter. That'll give you your 16 and 32. Simple as this. Okay, using your thumb and your pointing finger again. Set it at 23 three quarter, and then sidestep. Hang on for dear life. See this? It's going nowhere. It's very, very strong height. So you can see how I've pinched it like this. Okay? Very, very, very good, solid, strong grip. Okay? <clears throat> Same thing when you're cutting with your knife. Alright? I like to uh, always, always put your uh, blade in the middle of the uh, of the uh, the Olfa knife itself. Always put it in the middle, not on the joint itself, because it'll snap. <sighs> so it's locked off. You do the same thing, except for this time, you don't allow for the quarter inch. And when you're tape cutting, you can do 16, 32 if you're doing whatever. But I always recommend using your knife to mark the measurement. So say we're cutting 20 inches. Okay, so 20 inches, I'm gonna go to the top half of the sheet, and I'm gonna mark it with my knife. And the same thing. I'm gonna score it, and cut it that way. All right, I'm not gonna cut it right now because I don't have a measurement yet, but I'll show you that again later. Um, it's simple as that. Just keep a good grip on it, and, and you'll be fine, okay? So good, it's a good idea to start practicing that. 
Okay. <clears throat> when you lift up a when you when you when you lift up a sheet of drywall, uh, always make sure that the white side is facing you, uh, because you don't want to be on the brown side because then that puts you between the drywall and the wall. If you understand what I'm saying. So always make sure that your body is facing the white side and use your knees and keep your back straight. So, okay, I'm gonna stand it up. Just like that. So it's, so it's very important that you stand up all your sheets ahead of time, draw your center marks and stand them up ahead of time so that they're ready to go. Uh, all you have to do is go in and pick them up and put them on top. Okay, so this is very, very, very important. This is the bevel. And what it obviously means is the bevel is it curves inward and this side curves inward. So this is where the two inch tape goes. So you put your mud in here and you put the tape over top and then you uh, will fan it out after with your top coats. But anyways, we're not taping, we're drywalling. It's important that you have your depth set properly. Uh, the gun, all drywall guns come with the depth sensor, or the the depth uh, gate, like the this depth nozzle. And uh, you turn it in or out. Uh, they all have a diagram, right? Uh, so this one here, you turn it inwards, it goes in. You turn it out, it goes out. Makes sense, right? You don't want to break the paper of the drywall. You just want to countersink it, uh, just so that the mud will clearly go over it. And uh, you don't want the screws to be hitting uh, the, your, the trowels. So always screw in. You're always screwing in your soft side first, and then your hard side. Remember to lock the stud into place properly. If you screw in the hard side first, you're going to have uh, your bevels are going to be uh, pushing out, and uh, that'll be an uneven, uneven surface. Just like that. So, a couple things. You notice I always have a handful of screws uh, because I don't want to keep going in and out of my pouch. So I have I have a little bit. Of, I have a handful, a small handful of screws, so I can quickly uh, load my gun and zip, zip. Okay. So I never bring my gun down. I just have my hand and my gun here and ready to go. Right. Simple as that. So. Uh, you can see when I'm screwing in the soft side, I am screwing on a slight angle. And that is so that when I, just before I'm about to hit the paper, I can snap it over and that'll lock the sheet in tight and the stud in nice and square. Um, also, you can see the depth. I was a little farther out that time, so all I did was simply go over it again. You hear that sound? That, that's just fixing your depth, making sure it's in properly. Bevels are, are a little more forgiving than the field uh, because remember you don't want to be hitting trowels and also if you're, they're not countersunk properly, they're, you're going to show, they're gonna, you're not going to be able to sand those down, right? <coughs> this is our bevel. Uh, when I look up to the top, I can see that my studs are pointing that way. So this is the soft side and this is the hard side. Okay, I always keep uh, screws in my hand so uh, I don't have to keep going into my pouch. 
because every time I gotta go my pouch, it takes time. So I have them in here, so when I'm done, I can load it up, lock it up. Okay. Simple as that. And I always, always leave one on the gun while, while I have it holstered as well, so there's one ready to go all the time. All right, now that all our sheets are stood up and the center marks are uh, drawn on our sheets, I have the Hilti line laser once again set up so that we can level our first sheet. Um, if you notice, I always put it a little less than center on the first run because the sheets can, are a little bit bigger than 48. So later on down the run, you'll appreciate that. And so we always leave a space at the bottom. Uh, so find some uh, plywood or uh, uh, drywall. Uh, the plywood doesn't break and it's easier to pull out. Um, make sure you don't screw off too low until you get that backing out or that spacer out at the bottom. But always leave a space at the bottom. It's like that simple. So and after you get your first sheet in, it's pretty simple after that. Um, the next sheet's just butt in. Uh, so you put four screws in the bottom. Uh, you put a couple screws in the field, remember? Knee, waist, chest, reach. And um, I mark the two foot holes with a screw. I, I tack in the first three up to six feet uh, because that's where we also draw our centers. So we can make sure that the 16s or the, the center marks, like the studs are on the right spot and uh, level all the way up. All right, so all right, to recap, we're doing uh, 12 foot 5 8 type X stand-ups. Um, we uh, got the first uh, six sheets up and we got the next six stood up. Remember to draw your center marks and uh, tack it in. Just tack it in at first. Uh, the reason being is if you over screw the bevel, uh, you have more possibility of it busting out and creating uh, spaces in your, um, uh, in, your, in, your, in your bevel seams, which is not good. So remember too, if, if it does bulge out a little bit, just tap it in with the end of your knife or a hammer just to set it back into place. Uh, you just, like I said, just tack it in at first, on the, just up to six feet, and then you will go up to the top and uh, screw in the top, and then you'll, once that is done, you'll screw down, and then, uh, yeah, you'll be screwing off, like, top down. <laughs> That's how that works. Um, let me think here. Oh, so you put your four screws in the bottom and stay away from the corners so that you don't break them. Okay, if you, if you screw within an inch of the corner, you're going to break it. So there's a very high possibility you will. Um, and when you're screwing off in the field, just put a screw in at your knee height, at your balls height, or your waist height, and your chest height, and then a reach. Simple as that. Um, don't forget your gap underneath, always a half inch. And uh, always uh, start with a sheet inside the wall, not at the end, because the ends aren't level. So you'll measure top and bottom, and you'll probably have to angle cut them. All right, we got our next six sheets stood up, ready to go. We're gonna get them on, and uh, that'll be that.
All right, so now we got our, our bottoms uh, stood up. It's time to do the cut-ins at the end of the wall. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've measured top and bottom. I've written the measurements down on the sheet uh, in the bevel area there so I know that it'll be covered with my uh, tape after. And uh, yeah, simply just measure over the bottom and the top because uh, some of these are going to be angled. And uh, well, I'll show you how to angle cut. Also. Make sure that you take note of anything you might have to cut out, like this uh, bottom left hand corner, uh, I'd have to measure over for each one to cut out around those uh, columns. So, um, like again, I got the top and bottoms all measured. Um, I'm going to set the camera up and just show you guys how I finish this wall off, screwing off and whatnot. So, um, yeah, right on guys. Hope you guys learned something today. Okay, so first thing we're going to do actually is we're going to put a new blade in the Ulfa. I like to use the one inch blades because uh, they're the most multi-purpose blade. Um, you can cut insulation with it and you uh, can cut drywall. So you don't have to interchange your blades out. So you just loosen it off, put your blade in the garbage and uh, the blade just fits in like that and goes back in the way it came out. Uh, if you ever want to break it, like change it, you uh, there's little lines. You simply line the line up to the back end here and lock it and then snap it off. I'm not going to do that right now because it's a brand new blade. So when you're working, I always put it in the middle so it doesn't accidentally break. I always put it right in the middle there so uh, it's strong, it doesn't accidentally break. We have uh, 43 5 8s, 43.58s all the way, so that's actually really lucky. Um, so just take your take your knife and measure up 43 5 8s. Right there. 
mark it with your knife, not the pencil, because then you don't have to change something out. It, it takes time to change from pencil to, to knife. So just use your knife to mark it. Uh, same with the, uh, as I showed you with drawing your centers. Okay, you pinch it between your thumb and your index finger or your pointer. Wait a minute, is that a point? That's your pointer? I don't know what. Anyways, these two fingers. Uh, you pin it here and here. With these two, basically. The second one just reinforces it. And uh, you always, same fingers, and you use your, your pointer finger here as the, the block. So you hold, hold on for your life there. Uh, make sure you make a nice firm cut. Simple as this. You can do a nice light score. The first time, score it nice and light. Right? And then you can do a harder one the, the second time. So you probably have to score it more than once, especially when it's a smaller cut. You know, an end cut like this because uh, oh, it, um, it's harder to break closer to the bevel. And this is tight back, 5 8, so it's tough stuff. Oh, and you know what? Before, I'm going to draw my center mark. Remember, you can either measure up to two feet. Or mark it off at 23 and 3 quarters plus a quarter for your pencil to make 24. And just do it this way. See, it worked out perfect. So we're going to go ahead and snap it. You just tweak it a little bit on the corner, work your way all the way, and when it breaks like this, all you got to do is push it down. Push it down. And it falls off just like that. Alright, so after you snap, the next thing you want to do is take your rasp and rasp your own. When you're rasping, when you're rasping, make sure you're rasping a little on the angle towards the back side. So um, you're making, you're not, you're going to make sure there's nothing ahead of the line, only behind the line, right? So angle it in just a little bit. To ensure you don't have anything past that line. Always raster cuts. It's uh, good practice. Uh, especially with the 5.8s, you can get burrs as big as 5.8 itself uh, and bigger. So, <sighs> Alright, so our sheet has a cut at the bottom. Uh, I have it already marked down 42 and a half and up an inch. Remember, it's going to be a half inch off the ground, so we got to account for that in our bottom up measure. It is over 42 and a half. Right there. Up one inch. Bottom up. A little tiny piece out of the corner like that. Take your drywall saw, simple as that. Voila. garbage in a nice neat pile. So this one, I'm going to cut the ends, the two uh, end, the small ones off one sheet. So what's important is to make sure the uh, bevel factory end is at the top and the bevel is on the right side. Push it to the angle cut. So I got 20 here and 19 and 3 quarters at the top. So I got 20 at the bottom. And 19 and 3 quarter at the top. It's important I stayed a quarter inch away from uh, all of the steel. Um, that's just good practice. Uh, if you cut it uh, too tight, like an eighth or sixteenth, it's just you're going to fight with it to get things in. Just always keep it a quarter inch off. Okay, so well, now we got to figure out which bevel goes where. And so this bevel will be the bottom. So this will be 19, or this will be 20. Top will be 19 and 3 quarter. Double check. Uh, 
Measure twice, cut once. So 19 three quarter inch tub. You're probably wondering how am I going to draw this line, right? Um, I can't possibly uh, just guess. So take your knife. Just grab it a little bit, not too much. And what you're going to do? Take your chalk line. Hook it onto that. And pull and snap the line. Like that. Come on the bottom, 20 and 3 quarter inch top. And I'm going to figure out which is the top to buy. Because I want my factory in the top. So, that's going to be the top. That's going to be the bottom. So the top is 20 and 3 quarter inch. And the bottom is 19, or 20 and 1 quarter. Oh. Same thing, I'll take my uh, drywall saw like this and make a little notch for my uh, chalk line. Content like this was because no one's crazy enough to bring up their equipment onto a scissor lift with them while they drywall. <laughs> so I'm going to go up there and I'm going to show you uh, how we put our centers on our six on our studs and how we screw in. All right, so now that we're up here, uh, you can see I'm going to make sure that the studs are on their center marks before I screw them in, and make sure I got a nice, uh, uh, good, uh, even on the uh, bevel studs like you see. I need it to be uh, perfectly in the center. Uh, this will help when you do your tops and the other side. When I come up with the lift, I make sure I have everything I need with me. So I got all my extra battery, uh, screws, uh, anything I might need. Always, always lock your drill off. This thing just bounce. Simple as that. So you have 
your top's screwed in. Now they're ready and safe, you can put your top on. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and screw from here down, and I'll be back and I'll show you the rest. All right, so now that we've gone up and measured our tops, uh, I got. I have to show you my list. I have this list right here uh, with the left and right measurements on it because I measure both sides every time. Uh, I have the one measurement right here that has a cutout. So I have the diagram for that, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so yeah, my, my right and my left sides. So I always want to have a fresh factory bevel or end at the uh, at the bottom because I'm going to go factory to factory. So I'm going to take my, my numbers from the bottom and this will be my top. So this will be my right and the bottom will be my left. So it's important to keep that uh, organized. If you can also see because it's angled, most of the sheets are at, at the same level. A lot of the times you see you can carry over the same number. So the left side of this is 99, meaning the right side of the next one is 99. But don't get carried away and assume that's always going to be the case because it won't be. You look down further, right? And you have, let's say, 70, 72 3 quarter here and you have 71 7 eighths there. You have to, or, yeah, right? So it, it, don't, be, uh, don't be fooled. Sometimes it, it'll be different. That is a little odd, if you ask me. 71, 78, 72, 70. Oh. <coughs> so, 73 half, okay, yep. So, I'm going to take, I'm taking three quarters of an inch off uh, from, the, from the top because of our three quarter inch deflection. So, I take a tight measurement. So, say it's 103 and three quarter. The measurement will be 100. All right, so I just went, went double checked on this number here because it seemed a little off. So 72 half, or 73 half and 73 quarter. So this will be 72 half. 72 half and 72 three quarter. Um, but you can just see this, it won't always be the same. So don't just all of a sudden start assuming things. So what I mean by that is, Find the, the best fit uh, for the space that you have to fill. So we were using the 10 footers up until now uh, because our, all of our measurements were above 96 inches. Now that our measurements are below 96 inches, we're going to switch to the 8 footers. <clears throat> okay, so what I like to do before I uh, cut it with my saw or the rudder is give it a score. I'm just going to give this one a nice light score. <coughs> yeah, I just give a uh, little cut like, oh. <laughs> Silly Chris. <sighs> so when you're cutting out uh, uh, the top like this, try to make it as easy as easy as you can for yourself.
simple, right? I didn't have to cut the whole thing, just made it nice and simple for myself. Alright. So you can go ahead and just start on the inside. And it'll just come off. And there's your cutout. Okay, so don't forget to give your cuts a nice rasp. It has uh, two directions, so make sure uh, you got your the way you like to hold it. You can hold it any way you want. Uh, just make sure you got it facing the right direction. And you'll figure it out. <clears throat> I like to have it facing this way so I can stab in corners with the with the end here. And I think most guys prefer it that way. <clears throat> so just use your foot. For the rest, I try to round these a little slight bit just so they don't get caught when you're putting it up and that's that, simple as that. <sighs> Alright, so we have that cut's done. So now we have 103 half on the right. This is important. So I, I set the uh, the T square up. We can go on either side of your mark, okay? But uh, for this purpose, I'm just going to use the inside. <clears throat> I can just pop it up on my foot a little bit because you can see the difference. Okay, you take your knife, you use your thumb to push down. You use your thumb to push in as you go. Okay, use your foot to, to uh, secure the bottom, keep a good hold on the top, Just give it its first couple of scores. Nice light, and you gradually go deeper with each, with each score. This is type X, 5 8, so. Don't be afraid to give it a couple of scores. And again, I'll just pop it up on my foot. All my sheets are cut, stood up, all my center marks are drawn, everything's ready to go. Um, I'm, I'm going to get Lamb in tomorrow to help me with the tops because uh, I'm just not going to do that all by myself. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I have all the tens ready to go and I have all the cuts ready to go. The scissor lift is in place, so we are laughing. So remember, to watch. Remember to watch all my videos on drywall and framing. Uh, you'll pick up a lot of tricks. Um, I might not uh, get a chance to, or I might forget things in some videos, but I'll remember them in others. So if you watch all my videos uh, before your first day on the job uh, as a drywall or a steel set framer, you'll be well, uh, well also informed. Also kept all my my lar all the scraps large enough for tops. I've kept so I can cut them, uh, cut tops out of them. Uh, I have all my sheets ready to go uh, for tops. All the whites are out. Um, yeah, just got to get these up now. <clears throat>
All right, so when you're doing your tops, your big tops, your 10 foot tops there, uh, make sure they're all stood up. You got your centers marked like I have here. Uh, they're all stood up, ready to go. Uh, another very important uh, thing to note is again, just like the wall, I don't start in the, in the ends. I don't start where my cuts are. I, ha I start somewhere inside the wall, generally the first full sheet in. Especially with these 10 foots, there's nothing in the way. All right, there's no cutouts. It's all gravy. So just start in the first full sheet you got, and uh, um, then you do come back to do your cut-ins after, so that you can take your measurements properly. Okay, it's very important. All right, so what I'm demonstrating right here is uh, when we're putting on our 10-foot tops, uh, you still have to laser level in the first one. You can see what I mean by that. We got our first 10 up there, and we have the laser line uh, showing us that it's perfectly level. Uh, and that's a good thing to do always. So I'll, I've done that on every bay. On each bay, I, I, I laser leveled the first top. All right, uh, now I also got the numbers drawn at the tops, ready for um, my cut-ins, which I'll show you next. Okay, so what I'm showing you here, like I was demonstrating on the bottom, you always start your tops inside the wall just like you do in the bottom so you can cut the, the ends in because that's not always going to be level and they can be two different measurements. So uh, to save yourself from huge gaps, you're going to do the ends last. So we got all our tops up, uh, the big tops that is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the ends and I'm going to also show you how we cut in to the beams. Like up in here, you see that the, it doesn't go straight up the column. There's actually a, a little bit that goes into that beam. So I'll be showing you how to cut that. And then I have all my numbers written down up there because I take my measurements for the top tops while I'm there uh, so I don't have to go back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scrap piece of drywall, write all the numbers on it, uh, and then I'll come down and, and keep that list close to uh, my pile uh, while I cut my tops. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys how to use the, the, the router real quick too on that, but uh, now you can see. So we got uh, our, t our tens are up, so now it's time to do the little 21 inch tops. Excellent. Okay, so uh, while we were up there uh, putting in the 10 foot tops, we were smart enough to write our numbers at the top of the sheets so we didn't have to go back up and take our numbers. Um, and then I use a scrap piece of drywall or something and uh, write all your numbers on it so they're right here. Uh, that means no up and down, you're ready to go. Uh, you can just do all your cuts. So it's very important, okay? So make sure when you're up there to take all your measurements so you don't have to go back to the same place to take this, the numbers again. All right. So also it's important to, uh, uh, you, you, you can, Put a bunch of tops in one sheet so you, you make sure you get them all marked. Write the sizes on the pieces so they don't get confused or mixed up because you have the, the measurements written on the 10 foot so you'll know where they go. Alright, so make sure you do all those cuts at once. Alright, snap them, rasp it, okay, and uh, you're good to go. Their tops are cut. Alright. Cross them out as you go and just keep going. Keep doing that. And I'll show you how to cut the ends in after. All right, so now you got, you got your tops marked out. You still got to do your uh, center mark because there's still a center on the end. Okay. <clears throat> Take your T-square. You only mark the top. Okay, because the T-square will draw a straight line, remember? Pinch it with your foot and your thumb.
your piece. Rasp them together because you're going to need a factory end. So, or at least a nice end, so rasp them. And simple as that, just give them a little cut. Like that. When you rasp the two, uh, the two together, you get a more even line, which ensures that even more perfect. cut up on the lift ready to go. I'm going to do the cut ins on the end so I'm going to give you another quick lesson. Um, I just I can't believe this whole job has been uh, below zero. The entire job has been below zero. Uh, minus 20 is probably the average so uh, doing this in the cold has been very very difficult. Okay right, so we have our top cut marked out. I already showed you how to do that. So now there's an angle, an angle cut to do here. So what I'm going to do for your, so it's for your chalk line. So you make a little dip in the in the drywall. All right. So that'll hold your chalk line in place. Hold it to the point you're going to cut to. Boom. Okay. So there's your line. You're going to go ahead and score it. But first. <coughs> We gotta notch the top for the I beam. All right, so I'm gonna take my knife and score it. All right, so I always round. I always round my edges uh, when it goes into the I beam. That is for the welds. Take the router. a little bit inside of my uh, line so when I score it it'll snap nice Stands up, it's going to go into the I beam and uh, cut its angle for the column. We're good to go. Okay, so now we're up in the top. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to do your tops real quick. You can see at the end how the board goes into the I beam. Oh, that's what we're hoping to achieve. Um, 
So we're up on the lift, so we have everything we need up here. All the tops, all the all the tops, and all the tools are all up here already. All right. So you can see we have. Uh, I think you can only see the wood. Yeah. All right. So we have a couple things to cut out on this one. This is why I uh, chose to do this one. Uh, first thing, though, you have to do when you're drywalling tops. If you can see the piece just next to it that's already complete, it's a gravy piece. There's no cutouts. You Almost every wall will have one, so find that gravy piece, and that's where you start your tops. And the reason being is because then you have a bevel to take your measurements from. Okay? All right, so like I was saying, we have our bevel here. We're going to take our measurements side to side. All right? So I have 19 3 eighths. So I'm going to leave a, a, like a small quarter inch all the way around everything. Okay, so I'm just going to copy those. Also, I've got 19 half to 23 quarter. <clears throat> All right, this C channel up here. Got nine to uh, nine to ten and seven eighths or eleven. Nine to eleven, we'll say. <clears throat> um, we've got to go back in. Take your bottom up like so. Alright, I got 10 and an eighth, 11 and 3 quarter. 10 and an eighth to 11 and 3 quarter. This one here, I got so 15 and an eighth, 15 5 eighths. Five eighths and eighteen, eighteen and a half. Eighteen, eighteen and a half. Alright, simple. So all I'm gonna do is to draw that exact picture onto my board. buddy yeah oh, all right so you do okay so yeah it's drawn out on the board now um, so I'm gonna go ahead and score it with my knife but actually first thing we're gonna do is determine how we're gonna fit this in all right so this is actually really simple I just go from here to here and straight up Straight up here, and straight up here, okay? And it should go in just nice and easy, and then we'll use backing. Fuck it, my hands are freezing, like everything's freezing cold. Alright, so that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and rudder that out and then I'll show you how to use your backing. Alright, so now we got the line square, we're going to use the rudder, rudder it Up. 
be our top. Is that just router your or <laughs> not router uh, rasp your cuts and you're good to go cool all right so I got the two pieces of backing installed one here and one here <clears throat> the top just go in like so beautiful see how, see how easy that is gonna gonna be to tape yeah, so we cut it in around everything as tight as possible. So it looks beautiful. So I'll go ahead and screw that in and I'm gonna finish my tops. And another thing to remember is uh, because we're using the, the slip track, the slotted track, keep all of your screws below, an inch below it. Do not screw uh, within an inch below that, uh, that top track and you're good to go, okay? Because that'll screw your deflection up. All right, so as you can see, our tops are all in. Um, if you can see up to the I-beam there, that's what I mean by cutting up and into the I-beam with your end cuts. That is the difference between a real professional job and an amateur. Okay, if you get those nice cuts up into that beam like that, it's beautiful. 